I sold some of my equity to a company called Silk Road Inc., a venture capital company based in Singapore, where I sold equity for some money. So I suddenly I was flushed with money because uh, you know uh, the venture capital uh, catalyst, as he would call himself, you know, grew up my business plan. I didn't do any business, but the beauty of Excel spreadsheet is you do one column and copy all, and somebody the venture capital company has. What will you be five years down the line? One second, sir. Copy paste. Five years, sir. Five years, it's there. What about ten years? One second, sir. <laughs> ten years is there. You know the valuation of the company. You can you can go through a discounted cash flow method or a asset method or that method or this method. Excel will get you a valuation that we want. And I I got my reasonable valuation for which I shed a little bit of equity, got a lot of money. but i was spending money and one of the way to spend money is to participate in overseas trade shows so i participated in one or two trade shows i was there was this and i was uh, i was also exhausting money uh, there was a trade show in uh, in uh, singapore auto mechanica asia it was a lousy trade show it was in a banquet hall there were only about 80 90 exhibitors they were all component manufacturers here i was trying to sell a concept and they, they all had products a few guys who will come will say uh, what do you uh, what do you sell uh, see this piston if you want to source from abroad oh you so you sell piston no oh, okay bye <laughs> he's gone here i am having a concept of overseas buying how i'll make it easy and a few guys also didn't stay back but uh, my partner and i we were like you know he was standing in that corner of the stall i was standing in this corner of the stall and we said even if you don't get business we will have to ensure that we need to talk to so many people per day so anyone who walks across will be wooed inside then we said uh, then the second day what we did was we we created this uh, uh, golf putting thing we got a golf uh, this thing and then a ball and then a hole there and ask people to come in and then just then you know, just putt so people will come and then part one of the guys his name is steve wiley uh, he came in he was he was a good golfer he was putting and uh, you know talking to us for some time uh, the organizers had a chance to go on a small cruise in uh, a one day cruise in, uh, in singapore we invited him he came uh, we got we chatted we drank we cracked jokes and we became great friends and uh, it was time to say goodbye and he said hey uh, you have become very friendly i have to tell you the truth what is what is the truth he said i know you explained about your business at two three times but i must tell you i didn't understand a word <laughs> uh guess what i'm coming to bombay next month i'll fly down to chennai i'll spend about i'll give you three days four days huh you explain to me what you do if it makes remotely uh sense for me to you know look at your product i will because you guys are great guys to fun guys to be with so he came and uh, you know uh, we have three companies in the uh, special economic zone today one of which is a joint venture with uh, uh, steve wiley and his company uh, <coughs> not saying we made it big but uh, you know we got luck talking of luck does is entrepreneurship getting lucky Arnold Palmer, you know who Arnold Palmer is? He was Tiger Woods without the frills uh, in those years. <laughs> uh, um, he was a golf champion. So once he had a hole in one. You know what a hole in one is? You tee off, hit, the ball, the ball goes, and not only goes, lands in the green, it goes into the hole. It's a hole in one. So he did a hole in one, and somebody in the crowd said, "Ah, that was lucky." So he said, "You sure that was lucky?" But somehow I find. the more i practice the luckier i get pearls of wisdom the more i practice the luckier i get entrepreneurship is getting lucky sure but you have to find a way by which you invite luck from that door how do you put yourself in a position to become lucky the young entrepreneurs that i met at uh, i was supposed to meet at 3 i came at 3:20 sorry is anyone here or still there okay uh, maybe they'll come in <clears throat> the young entrepreneurs i would want them to have an elevator story you know how many of you know what an elevator story is huh 
Okay, what is, I'm not going to ask you, don't worry. You know, God, this classroom business. I'm going to tell you my version of the story. Uh, <coughs> elevator story is, imagine you are in an elevator with a very influential guy, say, Chris Gopal Krishna, who is just next door. In two minutes, in, when he goes to the third floor, he's gone. You need to have a story which will be compelling enough to grab his attention before he walks out of that lift. Huh? Chris, just about an hour back, was telling every one of you, if you are an entrepreneur, you have to be a salesman. And to be a salesman, you need to be very clear on your compelling story. And this compelling story could not be, oh, the girl of the life, once upon a time when I was born. That is not the story you need to have. You need to have a story which will be not more than two minutes. Hoping that Chris Gopal Krishnan is in the third floor and not in the first floor. <laughs> you need to have that story. That's one way to get lucky. No, you have a compelling story and then he doesn't immediately give you business. He gives you a business card and then say, hey, contact me and meet me sometime next month. So you contact him and meet him. Yeah, that's one way of doing it. Getting lucky is less to do with chance and more to do with things like hard work, networking, being aware that there are possibilities that can happen, uh, being, being alive to probable occasions which could make you big. Yeah? So entrepreneurship is getting lucky. Entrepreneurship, staying with the previous slide, is, I'm afraid, also to do with a lot of, uh, uh, I know it's boring, but it's got to be hard work. There's, uh, you know, you, you, you have to work your butt off for the, for the first uh, uh, year or two years or three years. There's no other way. And it's, you, can, you can do it in a fun way. But if you're not going to put in 12 to 18 hours a day, uh, you know, chances of you are becoming... Uh, a successful entrepreneur is that much more diminished and you have to take your chances you know I I remember uh, going into Chicago uh, Union Station I used to travel only train in fact once I traveled uh, uh, Greyhound uh, I had a Greyhound ticket they have this uh, Greyhound 15 day ticket you can go anywhere and then in the night you go in Greyhound all these you know colored tall dark people next to you and you are frightened. I am not being racist here, but you know what? I mean, you, you get frightened. And then in Chicago, I still remember walking to EPC uh, in the in the rain. It's really windy, and you know you have to walk. There's an option not to walk, but uh, you know if you if you trust yourself and say that the more I work hard and suffer, chances are that I'll you know luck luck will happen to you. Have that faith. It will. It will happen. Something will happen. EPC, you go there five times, you get two leads. They'll, you get two leads and something will happen out of the lead. So, I can't stress enough to say that entrepreneurship is getting lucky, but luck has got much less to do with a throw of a dice and much more to do with stuff like hard work and networking, getting to know people and being alive to the presence of people. I've seen people in the same lift, you stand there and then the lift goes up. One, two, you have other people here, three, four, as if one of those days it will skip from one to four. Everybody will be standing at that. No? Why can't you converse? There could be some interesting opportunities lurking in the corner that you have not picked up. So entrepreneurship is getting lucky, but lucky is not, has got less to do with a throw of a dice. Now today, fast forward, I am not a Chris Gopal Krishnan. <coughs> Mine is not a fairy tale story. I am an entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneur, all right. I have three companies. The combined turnover of about 150 crores, about 150 people work for me. Uh, uh, with a decent uh, sized uh, uh, bottom line. I want to grow bigger. I would like to, you know, uh, create opportunities by which 
is 150 becomes 1500 for which I need fabulous employees I need employees who will work their butt off for me is that possible I need people who will let luck come to them I need people who will have all the qualities of entrepreneur the hell? I am an entrepreneur I need employees who will be entrepreneurs how is that possible so what I did was I redefined the definition of entrepreneurship I said entrepreneurship is not ownership entrepreneurship is two things working in an environment that fosters independent decision making working in an environment that fosters independent decision making you work in an environment you have the ability to take decisions whether it's 100 rupees or a million dollars if the work environment makes you or empowers you to make the decision is first part of the entrepreneurship second the results of your decision and work to be commensurate with the reward or punishment these are the two things as far as entrepreneurship is concerned this is my definition of entrepreneurship so what do I have to do for uh, make entrepreneurs to join me I'm not a big company I'm not a listed company yet though one of the investors are listed today uh, you can't buy APA engineering shares and uh, trade it in the market so I said first there will be a variable pay when you join me second there will be lots of bonuses depending on how you do if you don't do well the results are not the results are all well defined three I offer phantom stocks for those of only of you know what phantom stocks are Phantom stocks are just that. You tell them you have stocks, but actually they don't have. <laughs> Phantom stocks are I value my company today, and tell them tell them that this is my valuation of my company. My cap, my company say it's worth twenty million dollars last year by an independent value uh, valuer. Then I give phantom stocks to uh, employees, and. Uh, their stocks will grow up, grow when the value of my company, every year I value my company. When the value of my company from 20 million goes to 40 million, their phantom stocks double. When they want to quit the company, they can encash their share value when they quit minus the share value when they actually got. Okay, so that's phantom stock. In the sense, they participate in the well-being of the company when the company grows they know that they will also grow so the point I am making is I know uh, it's a dampener when I say that entrepreneurship in my opinion is not ownership entrepreneurship is you can you can work for Infosys you can work for TCS you can work for startups you can work for anything anybody as long as you have these two things in mind one, work in an environment and ensure at some point of time you are a business leader in a company you have the ability to take decisions you don't have to go up there and ask somebody you take the decisions, take the risk take the decisions but the decisions go right you get rewarded, the decisions go wrong then you are punished if you work in that environment even if you are working for somebody else in my opinion, my definition that is entrepreneurship